Good morning and welcome to our online service this morning at Tree of Life Lutheran Church. Today we celebrate the first Sunday in Lent. On Wednesday this week, we begin our midweek Lenten services due to the pandemic. We'll be doing that through Zoom, singing Holden Village Evening Prayer from our homes, 7 o'clock each Wednesday of Lent. We'll have uh, various musicians, vocalists who will provide the music over Zoom, and we will sing along from home. Carol will send out the Zoom link and the liturgy uh, each Wednesday morning. Brief homily will be offered as well. Because we need to also record our Sunday services on Wednesday evenings, we won't have time to move the Bible study to Wednesdays. The adult Bible study will remain on Tuesdays at 6.30, once again, via Zoom. Remember that from 9 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon this coming Saturday, February 27th, the Penn State University Alumni Association will be present in our parking lot. They will be uh, sponsoring a food collection, canned and box goods for our local food pantries. We hope you'll uh, take a moment, gather up some gifts of food, and drop them off that morning once again, 9 to 1, in our parking lot on Saturday. Today we celebrate birthdays for Ed Petrove, uh, February 25th, turning 75. Our secretary, Carol Wood, celebrated her birthday uh, on February 17th, and she is of an uncertain age. Nolan Kurtz celebrated a birthday on February 21st. Congratulations and prayers for each of them. We prepare for our worship with the prelude. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy upon us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. 
The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked be may have no power over us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Spirit. 
first reading is from Genesis chapter 9. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you, and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming, the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, this word proclaimed and we who hear it, that as we begin our Lenten journey, we would follow faithfully knowing and trusting in the perfect love of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Traditional Jewish and Christian theology both make the claim that God is moral and that humankind, you and I, we are vested with moral responsibility. Think about the distinction. God is moral. We're vested with moral responsibility. So there is a distinction. There's a difference. Try as I might, I just can't seem to get things right, at least not for the right reasons. You may sometimes feel the same. Martin Luther recognized this problem. He said, we are helpless against sin. And we can see what he means when we do a bit of self-examination. And it certainly would not have taken more than 15 minutes on CNN or MSNBC or Fox News last week to figure out what this is all about. We do things, and we say things, and we believe things, not because they are moral, but because they are expedient. They fit the way or the belief that happens to serve you and I best at a moment in time. And while we make laws to keep order, and to punish the disorderly. In the end, the law mostly shows us just how inadequate we are at keeping it. Luther again taught, the law shows us just how much we need Christ because we so often fall short of it 
and he was right again. So Lent begins this year with the story of Noah and the Great Flood, today's reading from Genesis. And this story, as many people know, is yet another new creation or recreation story. It's a sign for the first Sunday in Lent, and it's paired in this year the lectionary with St. Mark's rather abbreviated story, just two verses long, of the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. About the Noah story, the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve had been a disaster from the outset. By the time Noah came around, there were no others, Scripture says, among all of humankind, None but Noah, whom God could count as righteous. And so somehow in the mind of God, God thought, it's time for a do-over. It's time to push the reset button, a second shot at creation. Even the prophet Isaiah, centuries later, we'll look back and recall the story of Noah. In Isaiah chapter 24, verse 5, a literal translation would read, For the earth was defiled under its inhabitants because they transgressed teachings, violated laws, broke the ancient covenant. So what teachings... What laws, the student of the Bible ask. And while the point will be argued again for centuries, rabbinic teaching will generally agree on what are called the seven commandments that never actually show up in the text of the Bible. No idolatry, no blasphemy, no bloodshed, no incest or adultery, no robbery, establish courts of law, and don't eat the flesh cut from a living animal. Interesting, these seven laws, the laws that predate Noah. What teachings, what laws are violated? These seven the rabbis will agree on. So they will establish the moral code with God's authority behind them long before the Big Ten. And it wasn't just that these were good and decent things to do, but these were things that were sanctioned by God, the rabbis say. Think of it. Just six chapters into the Bible, six chapters into Genesis, the first book of the Bible, it's already time for a do-over, do over, a reset button. When our daughter Betty, Betsy many years ago began to show some interest in the game of basketball, Betsy and I would come down here to the church, to the fellowship hall, and I would bring a pile of those orange cones. All parents remember those orange cones that we carried in our trunks of our cars and took to every field where our child had a game or a practice. I'd bring those orange cones into the fellowship hall, and I would scatter them in various places. And we would run through dribbling and defensive drills and passing drills and shooting drills. And you can remember doing similar kinds of things with your own children, taking shots on goal, perhaps if your child played soccer, or sharing a piano bench with your child while they learned how to play the piano or running through your ABCs, right? Or all the state capitals as you traveled in the car from place to place. 
So Lent is a do-over for followers of Jesus. It is a five-week reset button designed for the amendment of life and self-reflection. What have you done well these days? What have you not done so well? Where have you stood your ground? Where have you stumbled and fallen short? Where do you need a little bit more practice time? And our answers to these kinds of questions are not meant in any way, shape, or form, at least Lutheran Christians believe, to make us more moral. As Luther said, we are helpless against sin. And I have long since given up, giving up for Lent. At least in the sense or expectation that somehow by my actions, I will achieve a more, a higher moral equation. The best I can hope to do is see my need for God even more and grow my hunger for Christ even greater. Not too many weeks ago in a series of email exchanges, our brother in Christ, Neil Sunkel, and I confirmed the shared decision that we had made uh, over a year ago, I believe in the fall of 2019, to abandon ship with Facebook. I was struck by a phrase that Neil used in one of these email replies to me. He told me in this reply that Facebook was making it difficult for him to love. And I thought to myself, that's a perfect way to characterize it for me. It was making it difficult for me to love. It had become a barrier in my life that needed to be removed for love's sake. So if you've lost a good friend due to some sense of moral superiority through your use of Facebook, it may be something for you to pray about and to think about what's most important in your life. This is a perfect season to do that. So Jesus is tested in the wilderness for love's sake. This story, too, is another do-over story. It's another reset button. And for Christ's followers, it becomes the penultimate one. When God the Father, out of love's sake for God the Son, offers literally the final answer concerning our helplessness before sin. And Noah's rainbow, as much as God had great hopes for it, transforms into the cross of Christ, the final sign of the covenant, that when you and I find it difficult to love, God has an answer, and that is perfect love. Amen.
Now, if you would join with me in professing our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now, if you would join with me in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.